At the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify the use of least squares approach of linear modeling, define the uses of least squares approach of linear modeling, and appreciate the significance of least squares approach of linear modeling. If you are a medical data scientist, one of your challenges is to build a model that can perform disease diagnosis. So to do this, you may need to have a data set that is comprised of measurements. And these are me measurements should contain some of the attributes that you need. So the attributes that you may need are the body temperature, we have the body mass index, possibly, blood pressure, and many more. Maybe you also would like to have the, 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 the sugar level, and many more. So for better results, you should get these from patients who have known disease state. So after taking the measures, you may want to identify who among them are healthy or diseased. So this kind of situation describes a significant and general technique in machine learning. So this is, or this learning, or inferring a functional relationship between a set of attribute variables. So in this case, we have here attribute variables. And when we infer or learn a functional relationship, so we may, be, we may be able to understand the relationship or the interaction between or among them. So maybe you would want to ask about the meaning of functional relationship. So Joseph, what is the meaning of functional relationship? What is this? So functional relationship means that a certain attribute affects another attribute. Say for example, the body mass index has something to do with blood pressure. Or it could be the blood pressure has something to do with body temperature or body temperature has something to do with blood pressure. So see, can, can you see the interaction or the relationship? So for better understanding, let's have this example. So this illustration shows the product sales in million. Let me write here million, so we won't get lost. So this is owned by a certain company, and let's name this company as Company X. Okay, oops, Company X. Okay, so using a linear modeling, we have a straightforward way of learning the problem. So basically, the use of sales or of product sales data is to learn a model of functional dependence. Let me write here functional dependence. So we have here some terms that you have to take note of. Functional dependence. So first is we have functional relationship. So maybe you would like to ask, what is this functional dependence? So Functional dependence shows a relationship that exists when one attribute uniquely determines another attribute. So, of course, this is only relevant if it exists. Obviously, there is nothing to speak of when this dependence or relationship does not exist. So, here in our case, we are concerned with identifying the functional dependence between the sales of the sales, I mean, or sales product and the year. So we have here the sales, then we have here the year, or the business year, okay? So using this model, we can predict or make predictions about the future sales trend. So I know that you are thinking something like you're asking yourself, why is it that we are only considering year here? So is this the only attribute if we would like to study about a certain trend of the sales? So, of course not. As clear as the broad daylight, year is not, year is not 
the only factor that affects sales growth. So if we mean business, in using our prediction, we may want to consider other factors like advertisements. Ad okay, let me write here. Advertisements. Advertisements. You may also would like to consider the packaging. And also, you may want to take note of the price. And actually, you can add more factors or attributes that really affect the trend of your sales. So by plain sight, we can see that there seems to be a positive relationship between, or shall we say, statistical dependence between sales in millions and the year. Okay? So, but be careful in saying this way because functional dependence is not causal dependence. Let me write that. Functional dependence is, okay, let me write here again. The functional, functional dependence is, sorry, is not equal to causal dependence. So what's the meaning of that? I have already discussed about functional dependence. So what about causal dependence? What's the meaning of this? So causal dependence can be stated this way. An event B casually, okay, an event B casually depends on event A. If and only if event A had occurred, then B would have occurred. So to say it otherwise or to say it differently, we could say that if A had not occurred, then E would not have occurred. So to state it vis-a-vis -vis our case, there is no sales if there is no year. It sounds unreal or impractical actually, but this is the best way to express it. What is this for? Why do we have to study this? If we would like to investigate the relationship between two variables, a least squares approximation assumes a causal relationship between them. Here, it matters which one is independent and which one is dependent. It can also be used to make recommendations to customers. For example, you would like to make a model of the attributes of the items a certain customer bought before and whether he or she liked it. So with this, you can predict which items this certain customer may likely buy in the future. So with this, you can make recommendations to him. So after all being said and done, let's try this. What is causal dependence? What is a functional dependence? Why is our understanding of linear modeling important? Write your answers in the comment below. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.